My name is Susan Ashworth. I live alone in this old two-bedroom flat. I rarely go outside. Some would say it's a lonely life, and I guess that's true, but I don't like people's company. Not lately, anyway. I only trust my cats these days, and I will miss them dearly, but they will understand, like they always have. Teacup stays with me till the end. He watches me, as if he knew. Because earlier tonight, I swallowed a whole bunch of pills. They're legal, of course, prescribed by my doctor for my sleeping problems. But I've taken 34 of them, all I could find in the cupboard. And now the room around me spins in a blurry tango as my heart slows down. Any second now, I will be dead. I feel calm. I'm ready for it. I've only got one thing to say now. Thanks for nothing. Goodbye. What's making that noise? Hello? Who's there? Answer me!
can't remember this place. Am I lost? Welcome to my house, Susan Ashworth. I have been waiting for you, my dear. I knew you would turn up one fine day, Luxus. Who... who are you? I have so many names, it's hard to pick one. But I'm curious, who do you think I am? I really don't know. Can't you just tell me? That's very much like you, Susan. You won't even try. You have given up on everything lately, haven't you? Why shouldn't I? Is there a great reward for trying? I didn't think so. Would you have tried if I had told you there was? Maybe. I don't know. Something that could change your life forever. No, there isn't. There never is. And yet, some people do great things to find it. I'm afraid I'm not one of them. What is this place? This, my dear, is my humble kingdom. And this house is my castle. I rarely invite people in, just like you. I like my solitude. But you are a special guest, and I'm going to make an exception. Me? Special? I can tell you now that there's nothing special about me, lady. Don't bring yourself down, Susan Ashworth. Today, you are my guest of honor. What will happen next? Depends on you, Susan. Inside my house, there are dark hallways that lead to places you don't want to see. But there is also something that will make you want to return to where you came from and cherish every single little breath you take. I'm going to make you an offer, Susan. It's a chance only a fool would refuse. Okay. An offer? What can you offer me? Let's come inside. It's getting cold out here. A lonely seashore. We 
can talk properly, my dear. I still don't really know who you are. I go by many names. I've never paid much notice to what the living call me. But there is one name the Fallen Ones use when I speak to them. I find it most accurate. The Queen of Maggots. Is that what you are? Why maggots? Because they feed on what's dead and gone. Dead and gone. I guess that's me. Will I be punished for taking my own life? Most people would be, but not you, Susan. You see, I watched you long enough to understand how you feel. I don't expect you to believe me, but I actually have sympathy for you. Who knows, I could be your only friend. The only friend in the whole wide world. So like I said, I'm going to make you an offer. I want to help you. I will give you back your happiness in exchange for a simple task. Your life will change completely. You will be yourself again. And you will soon forget the sadness that has consumed your heart for years. What do you want me to do? Yes. I think it's time to explain. But where are my manners? We're still in the hall. This is not a place for a serious talk. Follow me to the next room. I'll tell you everything you need to know. What's your offer then? What can you fix that life has destroyed? Susan, death can fix nothing. But though we are both dead, I am not death. I might seem just like a strange old woman to you, but I'm just as powerful as gods. And I chose you, Susan Ashworth. I'll need you to go back and face five people. They're not ordinary people. They're very special, just like you, only in a slightly different way. Those five people, who are they? The Parasites. That's what I call them. They don't know each other, but their destinies are bound together. You will have to keep your eyes open and be constantly on guard. Those people will want to get closer to you. They might even pretend they are your friends, but don't let that fool you. They have nothing but cruel intentions. They'll want to hurt you, Susan. They'll want to kill you. As homeless as they might appear, parasites are the evil scum of the earth. And they all deserve to die. Isn't my life bad enough without them? Don't be frightened. You will have a great advantage over them. They don't know that you know. Do you understand what it means? You will become my hunter, serving punishment for their sins. A tool of destruction. A dark angel walking through the river of blood. You find your purpose in life and you see for the first time how satisfying it can be. But how will I recognize them? There isn't a great deal of people in your lonely life, is there, Susan? You will know when you see them. Bring those deceitful bastards in front of me, and we'll make them regret for everything they've done. Are you expecting me to kill them? No, Susan, I'm expecting you to fight for survival. To do everything you can to defend yourself. I know you're not a murderer. 
quite the opposite, actually. You're a good person. And I also know that you don't want to suffer. And those people will want to cause you pain. They won't hesitate. In the end, you might have no choice. Think of it as gardening. If there were weeds among the flowers, you'd pull them out, wouldn't you? You'd get rid of them without thinking twice about it. I'm not really a gardening type, but I see your point. I'm glad. And remember this, you are not the only victim. If you don't stop them, the killing will continue. Innocent people will die. You have the opportunity to make the difference. And a chance to save yourself. I can't do this. It's too much. Dealing with criminals is a job for the police, not someone like me. Indeed, you are weak. That's why I have prepared a special gift for you. Immortality. You cannot die, Susan. You will always return to life no matter what happens to you. What? This is the last thing I wanted. Please, can't you just let me die? I've made the decision. As long as they are alive, you cannot die. This all must be just a weird dream. I don't believe you. Susan, see this door here? Let's go inside. I want to show you something that will help you make up your mind. Follow me. It's you, Susan. Come closer. Say hello. I don't want to look at it. Haven't I had enough yet? That body in the ambulance. Then the forest. But this place is... This is exactly what I was trying to run away from. I don't want to be here. Make it go away. I assumed it would be wise to give you a little taste of the suffering you'd endure. I want you to understand that you can keep going long after you come. It's time to make a decision. The parasites are coming, whether you want it or not. You haven't really got much choice. You must stand up for yourself. I take orders from nobody. I'll do it my way. Don't you understand? There is no other way. Well, I don't know that. Besides, you could be lying to me. How do I know you aren't? I'm no murderer. I don't want to be. I'll find another way without you. What? Look, I appreciate you giving me another chance. Don't get me wrong. I can see now that I've made a mistake. And I'm ready to try to fix my life. I really don't like what you're saying. If there's one thing I learned in life, it's that people let you down all the time. If I don't rely on myself, I can't rely on anyone else. You fool! You damned arrogant fool! You have no idea what you have just done! 
Fine. Have it your way. In the end, I will be the one laughing at you. I always am. Yeah, don't laugh too hard, old woman. You might break something. When we meet again, you will beg me on your knees to give you a second chance. I don't really believe in second chances, so I might have to disappoint you again. Look, this is all just a bad dream. I want to wake up. I'm back in the house. Okay. It'll be fine. I don't need her. I'm sure I'll figure out what to do. They left me no choice, Alice. Maybe one day you'll forgive me. How did I get back here? Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. 
There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration, obviously. I look at the damaged human mind and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts. Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Could you confirm your name for me, please? Susan. Hi, Susan. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. I can see your brain functions just fine and there's no permanent damage of any sort. We've checked your internal organs and they're fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please let them know if you need anything. Take care, Susan. Yeah? Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but you know I'm going to anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You, doing what you've done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw, that was a chance. One in a million. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18-year-old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah?
Bad dream. Yeah, a really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. What was it about? I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all. Not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on ten litres of oxygen, through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course. And as soon as they'd left, she lit up a fag. The whole room went up in flames, and so did she. I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then, all of a sudden, I was on the field of barley. It was great at first. I felt happy. I was free. But it soon got worse. There was this tunnel, but there was no light at the end of it. Only darkness. Then I got lost in the woods. There was my dead body hanged on the tree, a burning car, and a crow and a deer. I heard something behind the trees, but I didn't dare to look. Then I found the house. The old woman who lived there, I think she was death. Or maybe she was the devil, I'm not sure. She said they call her the Queen of Maggots. She said I should go back, gave me another chance. And so, here I am. Weird dream, eh? Maybe it wasn't a dream. I really believe in that sort of stuff. It's not impossible. It felt real, but it was just a dream. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why do you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at seven in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward. Because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman. 
but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. But Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some... problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew. Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. Well, she left. And I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells... funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. Did you see this daughter of mine? No. Sorry, Susan. Apparently she came in the ambulance with you. But then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Maybe. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse, not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, 
It's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up, right? We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? I was brought up without a father. I understand he wasn't there when you were growing up. Can you tell me why? What happened to him? He... committed suicide. He was acting strange all week. Sometimes he wouldn't say a single word all day. Then he'd get very angry all of a sudden. Always about something silly that didn't really matter. I was eight. My ninth birthday was in a month. We had a gun in the house. A rifle. It was in a box on top of the wardrobe, so I couldn't reach it. I wasn't even supposed to know about it, but I did. I woke up one night when I heard some strange noises. I sneaked up to the living room and saw my father take the rifle out of the box. I followed him as he went downstairs to the cellar. I will always remember the sound that gun made and the sound of my father's brain splattered all over the cellar wall. A tragic event indeed, especially for a child to witness. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I can't complain. My mum was great. She did her best to make up for the loss of my father. Me and her, we were like best friends, like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. Her forever broken heart finally gave up. But she did give me a wonderful childhood, despite everything that happened. I will always love her for that. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes and we will talk about something else. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. Hello? I guess I should wait my turn.
I'd like to go home now. Well, so would I. But there are procedures and a system in place. I can't just let you go like that. What? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Let me through. I'm going home. Can I see the discharge letter first? If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. You have no right! I am a free person, and I'll do what I want. I'm not staying here a minute longer. I'll have to see the letter first. May I ask what your name is? I'll come back later. Please do, Mum. We'll be right here. Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? I'm feeling a bit woozy. Are you really? You look fine to me. No, I I'm really not feeling well. Fine, I'll call the doctor for you. But I can't help it if he's busy and can't get here straight away. In the meantime, I know how to make you feel better. I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Susan Ashworth, 24th of May, 1970. I'm just going to check your name band now to confirm that. That's fine. That's fine. I'd like you to drink this liquid, please. It will help you relax. It will help you relax. That's a good girl. Now, drink it down. You'll feel much better. Now, go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep.
The drugs have worn off and I feel better now. But I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. Hi. Are you all right? Can we talk for a minute? I can't talk. Please, just leave me alone. Oh, I mean you no harm. I'm trapped here, just like you. Trapped? I don't know. It's just so hard to think without it. But you're a stranger. And you're not one of those lovely nurses either. They look after me so well. I trust the nurses like I trusted my mother. I just want to talk. I need your help. Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please tell me it was her. Um, yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh, well... What is my mother's name? Hmm... Uh... Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. Do you know how to get out of here? You're not supposed to get out. We must stay here. Do what they say. Take pills they give us. Sometimes, if I behave, they give me the red stuff. I wait for it. I'm being good. What is this red stuff? It's a drug. My favorite one. Red stuff takes the pain away. I must stay here. Good nurses have been most kind. They always remember. They know I'm suffering. But it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. How about we swap our name bands? Oh yeah, I don't mind. But that would be like a favor to you, yeah? Well, technically you wouldn't lose anything because I'd give you my name band instead. Does that make any sense? Sure, yeah. I do want something better in return though. I'm not that stupid. I know you'll use it to get out of here. Oh, I never said you're stupid. I... I just really want to go home. Please understand. That's fine. I don't mind. I'll give it to you if you get me the red stuff. What do you say? I thought nurses give it to you anyway. No, not that. I'm talking about the real thing. Something you can only get in the world of dreams. Now that is something special. Is it... safe? It's perfectly safe. Um... Okay. I'll see what I can do. Feel like sharing? What's your name? There is nothing to share. Everyone died. Everyone. And my treat, my red stuff, it's not the same. I keep lying to myself. I'm a mean little liar. Always have been. This vein, you see, it goes straight to my heart. That's why it hurts so much. I wish I could, just one more time. But it's all lost now. Everything. I was always happy to settle for a consolation prize, you know? Are you all right? I'm fine. Yes, it's all fine. It's just hard to wait, you know? They said I can have it. You know, yeah? So I wait here. Don't want to miss it. 
That nurse promised it to me, the one with the red glasses, but I think it's been three hours already. Why are they late? Do you think something happened? Do you think she changed her mind? Because I swear if she did, I will hurt myself again. I swear to God, I will hurt myself again. I'm sure they'll be here in a minute. They're probably just very busy, that's all. What exactly is this little treat you mentioned? It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. They bring it, I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. I'm dying, I think. We're all dying, I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they keep it? Oh, they have it hidden well. You can't get there. Or maybe you can. I see it in my dreams sometimes. It's where the nurses are. But in my dream, there are no nurses there. I see it, but I can't get it. It's so near, and yet so far. I can still hear the broken heartbeat of the spider's heart. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes. Go. Be careful. They're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. I've found the thing you asked me for, but... Are you absolutely certain it won't harm you? Don't be silly. Of course it won't. Fine. I hope you know what you're doing. Can I have your name band now, please? Yes. No matter what they say, I do keep my promises. What do they... You know what? It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help. Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? The toilet's blocked. What? Ah, oh, well, that's hardly an emergency. It is when you need to use it urgently, like I do. I see. Fine, I'll sort it out. Just give me a minute. Ah, oh, it's the gloves. Again! I guess I'll have to get my hands dirty, since the cleaner's called in sick. Shh. 
Sorry, ma'am, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Here. Are you happy now? Yes, that seems fine. Can I just check your name band to confirm that you are indeed Anne Burton? Oh, all right. I didn't realize you knew how to read. There you go. Can I go now? Of course. Thank you, ma'am. We'll see you soon. No, you won't. Now get out of my way. And you must be Susan Ashworth. Um, well, perhaps I am. Do you mind if I ask you where you're heading to? I was just going for a little walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Give it a rest. I'm not going anywhere. Miss Ashworth, please relax. There's been a mistake. You have been prescribed wrong medication. I apologize sincerely on behalf of my team and the hospital. But luckily, we managed to spot it on time. On time? You have no idea what I've been through? Once again, I'm truly sorry. I promise no more drugs will be given to you. I personally guarantee you will have a good, peaceful sleep tonight. And you can be discharged in the morning. Why can't I go tonight? I want to go now! I'm really sorry, but we can't legally discharge suicidal patients without a full psychiatric assessment. It's too late for it now, but I promise we'll have a chat in my office first thing in the morning, okay? And then you can go home. Is that all right? I haven't really got much choice, have I? Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your life, Susan. You might find them very personal, but it's important that you answer me as honestly as possible. Fine. Let's get it over with then, shall we? I'd like to go home at last. Of course, I understand. So, Susan, let's see. Are you living alone at the moment? I live on my own, and it suits me just fine. I don't need anyone. People mostly bore me. Sometimes they annoy me or upset me. I'm happy with how things are at the moment. I have my little bit of space, and it's my own. It's private. I'd like to keep it that way. What do you do for a living? I'm a waitress. I work in a cafe. You do? Do you like it? It's okay. I don't mind it. It's just a job. It's important to keep busy. I'd advise you get back to work as soon as next week. I will. Describe to me what your mornings look like. What is the first thing you do each day? I drink strong coffee and smoke on the balcony. I know it's not a great start for the day, but it's one of my little pleasures in life that I find very hard to say no to. Would you say that you feel safer at home than outside? I... yeah, I, I suppose. It's not really about safety. I've just felt sad for a long time now. Really sad, you know? Somehow it brings me down even more when I go out and see all those happy, successful people. It makes me feel more like a failure if I don't see it. It doesn't hurt that much. What do you think is missing in your life? Or rather, what is one thing that you think would make your life better? A 
good friend. Someone I could finally trust. But I can't see anyone will turn up anytime soon. I've become a social hermit. People avoid me. You'll have to try to open up a bit. Hopefully the suicide watch worker will work with you on that. Don't think it'll help much. I heard they're not very good. Really? Sorry to hear that. Have you ever attended group therapy for depression or some other form of counseling? Yes. It didn't help much, as you can see. Just something to think about. I can see you're really willing to open up and talk about your issues. That's a positive sign. I... I haven't really talked about my feelings for a long time. You're doing very well so far. Do you have problems sleeping? Every night. I take pills for that. There aren't any left now, though. In the light of recent events, I think you should stay off those pills for a while. I suggest you drink some hot milk before bed instead. Would you describe for me how you feel at the moment? I feel fine now. I feel like I want to change my life for the better. Not really sure how yet, but I really want to try. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Yes, sometimes. Do you drink alcohol, Susan? No. That's good. Alcohol is a powerful depressant. I never really liked drinking. Excellent. Sometimes when life gets too much and people feel sad or upset, they think about suicide. Do you often think about suicide? Well, I used to think about it sometimes. Don't you think about it when you're really down? Susan, I'm a psychi psychiatrist. My job is to talk people out of it. Would you ask a fireman if he ever thinks about setting fire to his house? I suppose not. But I'm sure lots of people have times when they do think about it. I couldn't say, Susan. The statistics show that men are three times more likely than women to commit suicide. That puts you in the minority. But of course, that's missing the point. Suicide is never the solution. There's always a way of solving whatever problem you might have. I realize that now. Please, in your own words, try to explain to me why did you really try to take your own life, Susan? It was just a sudden impulse. I'm ashamed of it now. I had a really rotten day, you know? I felt like I was suffocating between the four walls of my bedroom. It just would get worse and worse. By the afternoon, I realized I cried for the past three hours. I... I didn't even know I'd been crying until I went to the bathroom and saw my face in the mirror. I looked like a ghost. I looked like I was dead already, you know? And then I saw the sleeping pills. I thought, why not? And I did it. Do you feel as if you're a burden? Or that life isn't worth living? Sometimes, when I feel really low, I just... I used to think everyone would be happier without me. But I guess people don't really care. Besides, I live alone. Who could I be a burden to? What makes you feel better? Music. I play the piano when I'm feeling down. It's also a signal for the local cats that the food's there, ready for them. That's when they come over, when they hear the piano. What makes you feel worse? People. They've let me down too many times. I don't know who to trust anymore. I only trust my cats these days. So you say in the suicide note. Because that's true. I've been stabbed in the back more times than I could count. Have you imagined your funeral? 
and how people will react to your death. Oh, I never really thought about that. But I guess it would be a cheap one. I don't really know what they do with people like me. Maybe they just throw us in a hole and forget about it, since there'd be nobody to visit my grave anyway. I don't think so, Susan. The city would pay for it. Or so they want people to believe. Finally, I'd like you to tell me about Eric. Eric? Yes, your husband. I believe this might be important. What can you tell me about your relationship? What had happened between you two? I... I don't really want to talk about this. Hmm. Fine. I suppose you've opened enough for one day. Okay, one more question. This is just a formality, but I have to ask, are you going to do it again? That's a hard one. I don't know. But hey, I've got it. The answer is no, I'm not. Thank you very much. Excellent. We're nearly done here. There's just one more thing I must clear with you. What exactly happened last night? Well, after I'd met you outside the ward yesterday, I went back to my room and fell asleep. I slept really well, considering what happened earlier. But then someone woke me up. It was the same nurse who was so friendly with me the first night. She said we needed to talk. We must go, Susan. You are not safe here. But... Please, you must follow me. Quickly. I went after her. The ward seemed very quiet. It must have been late at night. Hurry! Wait for me. Tell me what's going on here. The security guys were gone. She pointed at the corridor and said, You go first. I'll explain everything in a minute. Susan, if we don't escape now, they're going to hurt you. Please trust me. I know a way out of here. I'll help you escape. Let's go down this corridor. I'll be right behind you. I think I can hear someone coming. Damn it! We can't go through there. Let's turn back, Susan. I know another way. Turn left here. We can use the maintenance lift to get us out of this place. What are we doing on the roof? Liz! What the hell are you doing? And why is there blood on your clothes? Liz! It's quicker than the stairs. And besides, all the doors are locked anyway. This is the only way out of here. The only escape. Let's both jump. It won't hurt, you'll see. You've lost your mind. Get down here right now! I've made up my mind. I need to end this suffering now. Besides, I have no one to live for anyway. No one ever listened to me. No one ever cared. I listened. You're a nice girl. You have your whole life ahead of you. 
You listened. Did you really? Of course I did. You talk a lot, but I've always been a good listener. I liked talking to you. So do you remember that story, then? The one I told you the other night? The one about the woman in A&E? &E? Yeah. She smoked a cigarette and burned in bed. Okay. You have listened. Maybe you're right. Or maybe it was just a blind guess. But I must jump anyway. I have no choice. Wait! Please stop and think for a second. Did you not hear what I said? I have no choice! Yes, you do! You can choose to come back inside with me, and we'll just forget this like it never happened, okay? Do you remember that other thing I told you? I'm sure I told you about my flatmates. Did I tell you what one of them does for a living? I bet you don't remember that. She's a stripper. Yes. Or at least that's what I think she is. You've listened. I just wish other people did. I'm sure they do. It can't be that bad. What do you know? Why do you care anyway? I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. I thought you of all people knew how it feels when you're trapped and you can't trust anyone. Look, I'm sure there must be someone who cares about you. My colleagues don't care, my family don't care, even my fucking boyfriend never cared. He said he needed to go find himself. Did I tell you when he broke up with me? On Valentine's Day. Yes. Valentine's Day. You and I could have been good friends, you know. You really listened to everything I said after all. I... I'll be back. When you need help, I'll be there, Susan. But right now... It's time for me to let go. No! After that, I went back. I tried telling people about Liz, but they all thought I was crazy again and didn't believe me. And you were absolutely sure you saw Liz jump off this building? You know, it doesn't matter. I just want to finish this and get some fresh air. Susan, I know Liz well. She wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, I saw her this morning. She's fine. I'd like you to come with me and see her. Say hi. Make sure she's alright. Stop treating me like I'm crazy. Fine. I'll go. I don't even care that much anyway. The door is locked? I plan ahead, Susan. I had a feeling in my gut, and my gut's never wrong. I feel like I really got to know you, though. I'm very sorry you've had such a difficult life. I like your green eyes and your sleek cheekbones. You're a clever girl, Susan, but the sadness has poisoned you for too long. There is no coming back from it. For what it's worth, I would have let you go if it wasn't for Liz.
Jackson, I want to thank I thought so. There are two doors leading out of this place. One of them will simply take Susan back to where she belongs. But behind the other one, there is a great reward for her. It's something she always wanted. Something she longs for every single day. Where are those doors? I can't see them. Just walk back to the right side of the stage. I feel it as Susan can't miss them. Does Susan like my girls? I knew she would. Whatever they are, tell them to stop staring. But they are here to guide, Susan. They are the guardians of the doors. They know which door she should enter to get her rewards. But there is one problem. There's always a problem. I'm not even surprised. Which door should I go through? I will leave that to Susan's own best judgment. But this might be her only chance to find what she had lost. Waste it. And Susan will never get it back. Susan has one question, and she can only ask one of them. She must use it wisely. Fine, I can do that. But what's the catch? It's very simple. One of my girls always tells the truth, while the other one always lies. And I'm guessing you can't tell me which is which? It's something I've forgotten myself a long time ago, Susan. But does it really matter? What I'm questioning is all Susan needs to find the right door. Which door would the other doll point me to? Is... is this supposed to be my reward? Flowers? I hate flowers! You lied to me! You lied. Did you really think there would be anything precious waiting for you here? Look at these lovely roses. Just like
you treacherous, dirty bastard. I opened my heart to you, and you stabbed me to death in cold blood. You'll pay for this. I swear you will. But this means the old woman was right. I can't die. I'm immortal. I think it's time to find out how very mortal you are, Doctor. You're gonna pay for this, you bastard.
I don't need eyes to enjoy your fear. Scream louder, little bitch. Scream your lungs out. Louder, I said. Yes, this is by far my favorite of songs. Would you like me to dance for you? Unlike you, I know all art needs to be appreciated. Your scream is like a poem without words. Your body, an instrument. I never thought you had it in you. And yet you make every fiber in my body tremble with excitement. Your body will forever be admired by those like me who understand the only pure and true form of art. See you in hell. so much he would have he would have killed me like the others the animal you, you gave him what he deserved who are you they call me the cat lady now get out of here call the police I'm going home Standing by the river, I wonder, do I need a stone? No, my heart is heavy enough. It will drag me down for sure.
What's this? Old poems of mine. I used to write them when I felt really sad. This one here, River. I must have been reading it the night I took the pills. Why is there still a part of me that wishes I'd never got out of that hospital alive? Standing by the river, I smile. Will I miss it all? No. I'll be glad to leave it behind and never come back. Now it's a perfect mug of coffee.
this damn bird again. Go away! Shoo! That's right. And don't ever come back, you horrible creature. Miss Scarecrow here is going to guard this home from the likes of you. back in my old life. But how can I restore what's been broken for years? So far, nothing seems to go right. Every little thing is against me. Maybe it's my destiny to lose after all. And now those parasites? Like if it wasn't enough. But I killed Dr. X. And I saved somebody's life. That felt good. It's getting late. I should summon the cats now. I want to see them tonight. Standing by the river, I close my eyes. One jump and I'm there. No. Someone jumped after me. He will never be my friend. Inside, my darlings. I've missed you. And who's that? Teacup. I bet you thought you'd never see me again. Well, make yourselves at home. Dinner is ready to be served. Come on, everybody. Gather around. It's time for dinner. Never eat my food, Teacup. Already had your dinner, have you? No, I get it. I know. You're a good friend. The best friend I have, really. The only friend in the whole fucking world. You come over to keep me company and want nothing in return. I appreciate it. You should know. If you could know what I've been through lately, I've been to hell and back, my boy. But I'm here now, in my flat, alive, and it's still the same mess that it's always been. 
I'm not sure how to deal with all this anymore. Don't know if I can. I wish I could be like you, at peace with the world, always smiling. Someone's at the door, but who could it be so late at night? Are you out of your mind? Do you know what time it is? We've all had it with you and your bloody cats! I suggest you change your tone right now. Don't tell me about my tone, I'll have any tone I like. If it's alright for you to play the fucking piano in the middle of the night, then I can bloody raise my voice if I want to. You think you own this place? You think any of us here care about your stinking cats? They are a bloody nuisance! Get lost, you bald ugly man. I'm done talking to you. What?! How dare you?! This is going to stop! One way or the other, you crazy cat lady! If this happens again, you'll see pest control stepping in, and it won't be pretty! Hell, I'll poison your fucking cats myself if I have to! Point that finger at me again, and I will break it. I'm done talking to you. Go fuck yourself. Standing by the river, I'm thinking, will I jump again? No, I will float like a feather, far away from here.
I've slept all night and most of the day. Why am I still feeling tired? Someone's at the door. I really hope it's not him again. Hello, Ms. Ashworth. How are you? Are you feeling better? Do I know you? Of course. You don't remember me. My name is Mitzi Hunt. We met a few days ago. You were out cold at the time. Those pills you had were real good. You probably had one too many, mind you. It's you. I had a feeling you'd turn up sooner or later. It is me, indeed. A girl who got in the way and fucked everything up. I'll understand if you're angry at me. It wouldn't surprise me if you blame me for calling the ambulance and saving your life, but... I had other reasons for it, too. Personal reasons. It's important. It's important. That's why I came here the other night. To talk to you. Why would you want to talk to me? It makes no sense. I saw the ad you'd put in the paper. It seems you have a room to rent. I... They still print that? It was months ago. Nobody ever called. I forgot all about it. I gave up on it, actually. Well, I'd like to be your lodger, Miss Ashworth. But... You've got the room and I've got the money. Won't that work for both of us? I'm very tidy. I don't make much noise, and I promise not to spend too long in the bathroom in the morning. I don't really... I read your suicide note, you know. I'm sorry, but I did. I understand that you like your loneliness. You stray from people. I get it. But I won't get in the way. I promise I will give you your space. You won't even know that I'm here half the time. What do you think? Do we have a deal? Well, I guess I could do with some extra money, but... Great! Can I come in? You said you were my daughter at the hospital. You're a little liar, aren't you? How can I trust you? How should I know you won't slit my throat when I sleep? Jesus, what's wrong with you? Slit your throat? Why are you always so suspicious of people? If I wanted to do such a thing, I would never have bothered saving you, would I? Just think about it for a second. I was trying to avoid all the stupid questions. I didn't know what else to say. That seemed like an easy option at the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me come in the ambulance with you. And I wanted to see if you've made it. This spare room I have is pretty bad, you should know. I'm not fussy. It's not for long anyway. Just a few weeks, maybe. Anything is better than what I've got at the moment. Which is? I slept at the train station last night. There's a guy there who docks rats. You should see him. Wait, can you even afford rent for the room? Sure. I'll pay you for two months in advance. Money's not an issue. Why not go to a hotel, then? I hate hotels. More than train stations, with homeless weirdos and rats. Robbie? Oh no, he's cool. He's alright. And he kept the rats away. How did you get in that night? I'm sure I locked the door. Well... Okay, I'll tell you. You won't like it probably, but I'll tell you. I picked the lock. You did what? Look, I know it sounds like I'm some sort of criminal, but believe me, I'm not. 
My dad was a master locksmith. He knew everything there was to know about locks. He taught me some of that stuff too. Look, I bought this little box. I always carry it with me. There are a few types of lock picks in it. They're very expensive. Custom made. It's now the only thing that reminds me of him. I see. But you know, it does sound like your father was really a burglar, not a locksmith. It's not important anymore. I guess it isn't. But what gave you an idea that you can pick the lock on my front door and just barge in uninvited? I heard the cats. They were going crazy. It was like if all hell broke loose inside. The noise they made. It was incredible. Like ghosts howling. And for a while, it turned into an almost human cry. Well, anyway, I kept banging on the door, but you were already asleep. In a coma or whatever. So I pulled out a sea rake and got the door open. I... You could say I had a hunch. A hunch? Great. I had a hunch that something was very wrong. And I made no mistake, did I? Why do you want this room so much? Let's face it, this flat's falling apart. It's cold, it's dark, it's a bit moldy. This is the old part of town where nothing ever happens. It's far from the city center, and there are only two buses going through here, and that's if you're lucky. And I'm known around here as a fucked up, wicked cat lady. They'd burn me at the stake if they could. They'd put me in a bag and drown me in the river like a litter of kittens. I'm not exactly great company for a young girl like yourself. Who are they? People. Just people. I don't give a fuck about people, Miss Ashworth. But I do like cats. Do you think they'll smell the rats on me? I'm gonna use a shower. Well... I died in that hospital, if you must know. Oh. But not for long enough. It seems I must have been too attached to this shitty life I lead, and must suffer some more before I can rest. Jesus, Miss Ashworth. Why all this negativity? What in the world has made you think this way? Clearly the only thing you suffer is some nasty depression. Not that it's any of my business. But have you tried talking about it to a doctor? Yes, I have. Did it help? Not at first, but yeah, it did. I'm sure you'll change your mind when you see it. I'd love to see it, and I'm sure it isn't as bad as you picture it. The window is stuck, and it doesn't shut properly. It's alright, I like fresh air. There's clutter everywhere. I'll tidy up. It's got a funny smell. I'll burn some joysticks to cover it up. I love joysticks. Fine. I give up. Follow me. You can see it for yourself, if you're so stubborn. This room is perfect! Really? What about all this clutter? I'll move some stuff to the side if that's okay with you. But most of it I can use. All I really need is a bed to sleep and a roof over my head to cover me from that rain. And a power outlet so I can charge my laptop. Oh, and someone to watch too. You got a shower, right? I'm dying for a shower. Are you a part of that emo subculture? Please don't say that word ever again. No, oh, no, this is just how I dress. I grew up listening to real rock and roll, not that emo crap. I hate to be a part of that generic bandwagon. Okay, clearly a sensitive subject for you. You know, people seem to think that just because someone dresses in black, they're called for emo. You can't generalize like that. It's more complicated. I dress in black too. Of 
course. That's because black is the best color. Period. You mentioned some personal reasons for staying here. Yes. It's a long story, though. I don't really want to bore you with all that personal crap. Okay. In that case, could you give me the short version? Yeah, all right. I'm looking for someone. I don't really know this person, but it's a friend of a friend. I only ever talk to this guy online, so I don't know what he looks like. I love this lamp. Does it work? What was I talking about? Oh, yes. I don't know what he looks like, but I know my way around computers. I managed to track him down. Turns out he lives here, in this building somewhere. What I don't know is which flat he lives in. There are eight flats here altogether. He's in one of them, and I must just figure out which one. It shouldn't be too hard. What do you want from this person? I just want to talk to him. He said something really bad. Something horrible. I need to talk to him to get closure, you know. Just talk. Are you sure? Yep. I want to meet face to face with him. That's all. You're not in some kind of trouble, are you? Do I really look like some kind of a uh, serial murderer to you, Miss Ashworth? I don't know. What do serial murderers look like anyway? A scar across the face, an eye patch, rough stubble, those sort of things, I guess. That's a pirate you've just described. Just add a wooden peg leg and we've got a full picture. But who knows? I'm no expert on murderers. Not yet, anyway. Is there anyone I can contact? For references? Well, I've never really rented a room before, so not really. I've lived with my mum all my life. Until recently, that is. I could give her a call. Oh, that would be a perfect spot for my post up there. Um, yeah, sh sure, that would be okay. You know, you've been asking me all these questions and I never had a chance to ask about how you're feeling. I mean, you've just gone through a terrible experience. You barely survived. I suppose I might be out of line to ask you this. But I'm really curious as to why you tried to kill yourself. What made you do that? What did you feel? Long story. Won't bore you with this personal crap. Ha ha ha. Right back at me, I guess. I did give you a short version, though. Yes, but somehow I can't help the feeling that you've omitted a few important facts. Just some details. Anyway, I suppose your story is the kind that can't be shortened. Still, if you feel like talking about it sometimes, I'd love to listen. I'll bear that in mind, Mitzi. Let's go back to the living room. Room's great! So what do you say, Miss Ashworth? I hope you're not going to change your mind about this. Miss Ashworth? What happened? Are you alright? Go away! You have to go away right now! But... Why? Miss Ashwood, what's wrong? You're not safe here. You should leave. Now. Please, Miss Ashworth, I'd really like to stay. Don't throw me out now. Well, you can't stay. You can't. If you don't go, something terrible is going to happen to you. Please, just leave me alone. I was perfectly happy before you came. I have my cats. I have... I... I knew you were one of them. I knew it. What are you talking about? Look, just try to relax. Everything's okay. But why you? 
Why would you want to do this to me? You have no reason. Calm down. I'm not going to do anything to you, all right? I just want to rent a room. Nothing else. I promise. Damn, I even swear. I won't cause you any trouble, okay? Just take a deep breath. Please explain to me what's happened. I'm a little confused here. Then... Maybe... Oh, no. 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 You're going to die. I know. Yeah. I know. How did you know, Miss Ashworth? Are you some sort of a psychic? Do you possess some kind of supernatural mind treating abilities? Or is it just so fucking obvious? What do you mean? I... I don't know how you're going to die, but call it a hunch if you like. It's cool. A hunch. Well, I do. I know exactly. It's how it started, as a matter of fact. Do you want to see? I'll show you. Here, Miss Ashworth. Take a good look, because I'm not going to do it again. It's time to wake up, my little pussy cat. What's the matter, sleepyhead? Had a bad dream? Uh, do you want me to give you a cuddle and a kiss? Take the nightmares away? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> well, don't you worry, my sweetest. I know a thing or two about pussy cats. I can help. What do you say? Shall I take a good look at this pussy of yours? You're a dead man. You just don't know it yet. I'll cut your throat open and watch you bleed to death. I'll feed your body to the crows. Oh, you're gonna regret this, pal. What's going on in there? Who's this? Did you play with this little bitch behind my back? Cause if you did, I swear to God... Me? I'd never do that. You know me, honey. You're the only girl for me. This lady here will join us for dinner. That's all. For what? Take the goddamn mask off when you talk to me. You know damn well I can't stand it. And make sure you put it back in the van so you don't fucking lose it again. Okay, okay. I was just saying, uh, she, she's here for dinner. Good dinner. I'm starving. And I'm sick to death of them bloody cats. You nasty little whore. Trying to seduce my husband in my own home. How bloody rude. What? I wasn't trying anything! Shut up, you stupid bitch! I 
I know what you're up to. You kept staring at him with these big green eyes. You want him, don't you? You think you can take him from me? Well, I've got just the thing. I always keep this bottle handy. It's bleach. The strongest you can get. You give me no choice. I can't risk losing him. I have to make sure he won't be attracted to you anymore. You won't need these eyes and this face much longer anyway. No one will do it right if you don't do it yourself. Gorgeous. I see my old lady brought the bleach again. What a shame. I really liked your eyes. <laughs> it could have been a start of something uh, very exciting for us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she does that every single time. What do they call it? Trust issues, <laughs> that's it. Well, never mind. Plenty more fish in the sea. I I'm not too fussy, but even I have some standards. Ain't gonna touch a bird like you, I gotta be honest, girl. You look like shit. But I wouldn't want you to think I'm not a kind man. Uh, uh, Plenty of time until dinner, and you're in pain, so I've brought something to end your suffering. Think of it as an option. I've got this gun here. It's one of my favourites. There's just one bullet in the chamber. Large calibre. You'd be long dead before you'd feel any pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it's, ju it's just an idea, you know, no pressure. Ah, of course, you can't see it. That bleach turns your eyes to nothing but jelly. So I'll just leave it for you here. Feel free to use it. That, that bullet's meant for you anyway. I'd better go now. We won't want to get caught red-handed again, would we? You naughty minx. What was that? You can't reach it. Well, what did you expect? Life's a real fucker sometimes. Thank you. 
What? Who's this? My eyes. I can't... I can't see a thing. That bitch. A key. Who are you? Say something. Anything. I... I should be able to unlock the handcuffs now. No! No, no, no! I dropped it! Where is it? Where the hell is it? I've got it. I'm sorry, Mitzi. I have to break my promise. Hope you don't mind creepy posters. It's your room. You can do what you like with it. But I definitely prefer this to fairies, rainbows, and pink unicorns. Did you make these? No. My boyfriend made them. Some of them, anyway. So, Miss Ashworth. I happen to have a bottle of wine in my bag. I was going to leave it to Robert, but I forgot all about it. Robert? The guy with the rats? Oh, yes. Of course. So, shall we have a drink, then? We could get to know each other a bit more. I know, I promise I won't get in the way. And, I mean, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. But since we're going to live together for a little while, it won't hurt if we talk to each other, will it? Yeah. That's okay, I guess. Great! I'll bring the wine. Oh, damn. It's one of those bottles with a cork. Have you got a bottle opener, Miss Ashworth? In the kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. And while you're there, could you get a couple of glasses, too? Found some wine glasses. Great. Now all we need is a corkscrew. There you go. Let's get that bottle open. All right. That's all we need. Oh, and Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. Yeah. I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Very funny, Mitzi. Oh no, I mean it. That's fine, but just so you know, I always sleep with my eyes open.
So, the big C. Want to talk about it? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do. Before my time is up. It's fine. You seem alright. It's just... I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Her? Huh. Yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphoma, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah. Not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. Anyone else you know? I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building and with your help mark down who lives where. Sounds good to me, Mitzi. Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once, when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? The only monsters are us. Murderers, rapists, arsonists. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods or fog or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself. And like them, you show no mercy. Whoa! Where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... Parasites. 
You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just... don't know where to start. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like, forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. A perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. And he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films, but I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog? Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain indescribable beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment, then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. How did he die? How did Jack die? was so distant in the last few weeks before, before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly, but it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions, everything really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there, calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To 
listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea, to give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it, once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved, all thanks to the eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, and he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance, but it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I loved most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. But I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, when I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old parking lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day, I've never gone there again. Was signs on the car windows. Warning signs, yeah. I found on that forum that the Eye of Adam doesn't want any accidental deaths, so we posted this poster design for people to print. It turns out there's a whole sick ideology behind it. Fumes from the car could hurt anyone who opens the door, but that's not the point. The idea is to die willingly and with clear mind, to prepare for it, to embrace it. Jesus. You'd think the police would investigate the whole thing. Sounds almost like a sect. This guy knows how to hide. The police can't be bothered to make an effort. It took me three months to track him down. Now I'm finally so close, I can almost smell that fucker. I'm so sorry. I think now I understand. He loved you so much, he couldn't bear the thought of living without you. And that guy... The Eye of Adam. I'm not surprised you want to find him. I know I would. I'm not sure if I should believe that you only want to talk to him. But hey, that's none of my business. I wouldn't know what I'd do if this happened to me. Good to know, but I really just want to talk. I want to face Jack's killer and tell him what he's done to me. You know, the funny part is that he actually told me where he lives. He wants to meet me. 
Would you believe that? How come? Well, this kind of thing he does is called trolling on the internet. It's usually a form of extreme bullying, psychological cruelty. Those who are clever enough say don't feed the troll. Don't talk to them. It... It only makes it worse if you show any interest in them at all. And I of Adam is no exception. He craves attention. He's a hungry troll who wants to devour as many hearts as he can get a hold of. I emailed him and told him I was a massive fan who loves his work. He wouldn't believe me at first. But trolls are always hungry. And I was prepared to serve him a meal fit for a king. What do you mean? I fed him so much bullshit that he really believed I'm a suicide preacher just like him. Great. I wish he'd given you his door number, though. It's all a part of some sick game he's playing. Sooner or later, I'll find him. What are those two chemical products? Well, I... I'm not sure if you want to know that. I get it. You don't want to tell me because I'm a fucking suicidal maniac. Is that it? No, Miss Ashworth. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. Okay. Maybe to some extent. Just replace maniac with victim and fucking with... Recovering. You've only just come back from the hospital. Whatever it was that made you do it, you proved you are capable of going through with it. I don't know you long enough to tell you if you're completely over it now. And the last thing I want is to give you stupid ideas. It would be just like what the Eye of Adam does. I would never forgive myself if anything happened to you because of me. I mean, how could I? What if I promise to you I will never do it again? But if you don't keep your promise, Miss Ashworth, I'll find you in hell and kick your lying ass for breaking my already broken heart. You can't kick my ass when I'm dead. I'll soon be dead too, Miss Ashworth. So, yeah, I swear I will do it. I don't think so. You'll go to heaven, you muppet. The recipe for this deadly cocktail is very simple. Any good housewife can make it in a blast. Well, well. Boxes full of bleach. I suppose I deserve a bottle. I've worked hard for it. This reminds me of something. The first thing you need is a strong toilet bleach. You know the kind. Not just a regular bleach, but one that makes your eyes all watery and skin itchy. What's going on? Something is wrong, Mitzi. The cats are alarming. That's exactly like when I found you, Miss Ashworth. We've got to check what's going on. Oh, I'm really sorry, but there is no way I'm going out in this fog. Fine. I'll go on my own then.
fog. Can't see a thing. Someone could be getting murdered two feet away and not a soul would notice. But still, it could be worse. At least it's not raining, eh? Always look on the bright side, they say, and I always do. Not a talkative type, are you? What's your name, sweetheart? Don't be such a scaredy cat, sweetheart. You're Susan, aren't you? A kind man had described to me what you look like. And what, what can I say? It was spot on. What do you want? I'm just here on a job, sweetheart. Nothing more. I had a call, you see. There's a cat problem. And apparently, some crazy cat lady keeps making it worse for everyone. A crazy cat lady called Susan, I was told. Now, you ain't gonna like it, sweetheart, but I'm taking you for a ride. Oh no, 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 damn it. I can't remember my own number. I've got it written down somewhere at home, but I hardly ever use it. Finally, Mitzi, it's me. I need your help.
What's happened? Where are you, Miss Ashworth? I've been kidnapped by some psychopaths. What? How did that happen? You only went downstairs to check on the cats. Look, it doesn't matter. I'll explain everything later. These people are maniacs. They're killers. It's either me or them. I have no choice. I've found some bleach. It reminded me of this gas you were talking about. I could get rid of one of them with that gas and get a hold of a gun. You said it was fairly easy. Miss Ashworth, no, you can't. Listen to me. This guy is a fucking murderer. He's nothing but a parasite. No one will miss him. Trust me. And I could really do with a gun here, you know? I... but... What's the other chemical, Mitzi? Tell me! Now! Okay, fine, I'll tell you. It's no rocket science. You just need some pesticide. Pesticide? Didn't you say it is something everyone's got at home? Well, you wouldn't use it. You live in a flat high above the ground. It's for people who own houses. Or, like, mansions? You can pick up these things at any supermarket anyway. Fine. What do I do with it? Just mix bleach and the pesticide together. Make sure there isn't much ventilation. And wear some protection. A gas mask or something, yeah? Right. Bleach. Pesticide. Got it. And a gas mask. Got it? Yep. Thanks. You have to call the police. Yes, of course. I will, Miss Ashworth. But, wait. What should I tell them? Do you know where you are? No idea. Out of town? Somewhere? Have you tried talking to the police yourself? No, not yet. You're right. I should try that. I'm just not sure if they will believe me. Okay. Thanks. Wish me luck. Be careful, Miss Ashworth. I'll be fine. I'm a tough old girl. This will be like a walk in the park.
spin Do you know what I've seen? Do you know where I've been? I've been for the broken machine Miss Ashworth, I was worried sick about you. Are you alright? How did you get back? I walked. You saw something terrible in that fog, didn't you? I saw a monster. Miss Ashworth, I need to ask you something. Can I come in? I'm in the bath. Is it something important? Yes, very important. The fate of the world depends on it. You can come in, if you promise you're not a lesbian. A lesbian? I told you I had a boyfriend, Miss A. Both girls shouldn't get embarrassed of each other. Where do you get ideas like that? I don't know. It seems everyone is gay these days. Now, that's okay with me, don't get me wrong. But I don't necessarily want a lesbian to stare at my boobs, if you know what I mean. Miss A, if I want to stare at some boobs, I'll take my top off and look in the mirror. Right. Come in then. I'm cooking up some pancakes. What do you like on yours? We've got strawberry jam, maple syrup and chocolate spread. Oh. Nice. I like pancakes. I'll have one of each. Oh no, you'll have two of each. I made so many there'd be enough for an army. I don't really eat much. That's because you haven't tried my pancakes yet. And if you don't leave me alone now, I never will. But really? Why? I can smell something funny. I think your pancakes are burning. I'm so full up. Where did you learn to cook like that? My dad taught me. He was the king of pancakes. I'll wash up, if you like. I can do that. I like washing up. You do? Really? Really. I'm a good girl. And this is my treat for you, after all. Looks like we've got the rain back. I almost felt like something was missing. Do you think it will ever stop? I mean, what if it doesn't? Then it will rain for a million years. I'm not sure I get it. What's the point of that? What did you say it was called again? For the third time. Social network. Why is it so difficult to remember? I just find the whole idea really stupid. Why would I want to tell people that I'm having a shit day? So maybe you would feel better for sharing it with your friends. But I don't have any friends. No, you wouldn't with this attitude. You, on the other hand, seem to have 274 of them. How is that even possible? Well, what can I say? I'm very likable. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, they come every time you play the piano? Yeah, I don't really play that often. 
Mostly when I feel really sad. Maybe I actually play more often than I thought. You sado. I know a song written just for you. Remind me to play it to you sometimes. It'll cheer you up. It's called All Flowers in Time Bend Towards the Sun. Flowers, yeah. Of course they do. Do you know it? It's written by Jeff Buckley. He would have been bigger than Cobain, you know. I never heard of him. No, he probably didn't. He drowned in Mississippi when he was only young. I've created a profile for you. Maybe now you'll learn how to use it. What am I going to do with it? Just look for people you know. Invite them, talk to them. It's a good way to keep in touch. Maybe you could refresh some old friendships? I don't know. I can't think of any names. I probably never really cared enough about anybody. How about people you went to school with? Your old colleagues from work? Nope. Friends. Zero. At least they're right about one thing. I'll add you later. That'll be a start. I made us some coffee. Sit down and talk to me for a moment. I'm having a bad day. You with some company. Sure. Coffee sounds great. What's wrong, Mitzi? Um, I'm not sure how to get started with this thing. I've been thinking about it the last few days and I just don't seem to get any good ideas. Maybe I've been a fool all along. Looting myself that I could find where that sick bastard is hiding. Maybe I can help you. I have lots of free time, you know? Last night, I made this, well, map. I made a map. This is our building. All four floors. There are two flats on each floor. You really want to help me? That's so great, Miss A. How will I ever pay you back for this? I'll think about it later. But we haven't found him yet, have we? No. But I feel that together we stand a chance. So, let's talk about it. What do we know already? I know that rude, bald guy lives in flat six. I told you about him, didn't I? I think so. It's that guy who came complaining about the noise, right? Right. That's Brian Palmer. Let's mark him on the map. What else do you know about him? Not much. Wait. I remember some woman lived there with him. I've not seen her for ages. They must have split up. Would he be our potential suspect? No. That jerk? Never. Fine, I'll trust you on that. I guess we can count him out. I'm pretty sure one of the flats is empty. Hmm. Which one? I think it's the one on the first floor. There's an odd married couple that lives next door. Yeah? What do you know about them? Well, the man is called Joe Davis. He seems nice. Quiet type. But I heard him shouting a couple of times, and he sounded almost like a different person. Like a madman, you know? I gather they must have some serious relationship problems, and they're trying to sort them out behind closed doors. It's impossible to hide this personal dirt from your neighbours. I know it's none of my business, but I can't just plug my ears and pretend I don't hear what's going on there. And the wife? Ivy Davis. Or is it Sophie? I can't remember now. 
Anyway, she's very polite. Always says hello when we pass by each other in the hall. She's one of those size double zero ladies. So skinny you could easily take her for a coat rack. A walking skeleton. I bet she only eats a leaf of lettuce a day. Or nothing at all. She looks quite ill, actually. Anything else? They used to have a cat, Lucifer. I often wonder what happened to the poor little chap. We can cross off our flat, of course. Yep, good. That leaves us with only seven flats. Also, there's an old man in flat five, right opposite the Brian's place. There are strange noises coming from flat seven. Interesting. What kind of noises? Like screaming, explosions, guns. Then there are threats and insults shouted very loudly at someone. Hmm. I think I might know what's going on there, but it's worth checking anyway. You know the person who lives in that flat? No, I don't. It's the top floor. I have no business going up there. All I know is what I overheard from neighbor's gossips. Sometimes I hear a dog barking on floor one. First floor? Well, you said one of the flats was empty. Yes, which means the owner of the other flat keeps a dog. I hate dogs. Huh. Tell me about it. Noisy, smelly creatures. Can you imagine the eye of Adam being a dog lover? Can't see why not. In that case, it might be worth looking into. There's a woman with a baby living upstairs. Her husband? I'm not sure. I hardly ever see her. When I do, it's usually in the hall. When she's pushing a brown with a baby inside, she always has tons of shopping hanging from it. I nearly asked her once if she needed help to carry it upstairs. And? I hesitated for a moment, and by the time I offered, she grabbed the baby and the shopping bags and marched off upstairs. Okay, I think that's all that we know at the moment. Reminds me, I found an old baby pram in my bedroom among all the stuff. Do you have kids, Miss Ashworth? You never talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Come on, Miss A, it's all right. You can talk to me about it. I can tell there's some dark secret you've been keeping to yourself for a long time. You might feel so much better if you share it with someone. Let's just drink our coffee, yeah? I just really want us to be friends. I swear to God I could do with one. I'm not very good at friendships. I thought that was rather obvious. Friends should trust each other, you know. I told you about Jack and everything else. Why can't you just do the same? You told me about Jack because you wanted to. I didn't force you, did I? My private stuff is nobody else's business. Why does everyone want to remind me of this all of a sudden? Isn't ten terrible years of suffering enough to let go and never bring it up again? Even... Even for me? Ashworth, I, I'm so sorry. Your mug, it was an accident. You know, just leave it. I don't even care anymore.
Who is it? Flowers. What... what's that in your other hand? Go away. Leave me alone.
What have I won? Where are you, my dear? Oh no, it's dead. Oh no, what's this? Goodbye, other world. Reaches my ears. Well, maybe it's this for you. I stick my head into this shit. Give me proof, cause I need it. Oh, what's the Is that you behind my back, Mitzi? Miss Ashworth, I thought... I thought you were dead. I saw that man hit you right in the head. Me? Dead? No. No, I'm a tough old girl. You can't kill me that easily. Stop asking stupid questions. We have no time for that. Let's calm down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. What's this? Duct tape? Yeah, he had loads of that stuff. Maybe we can break this tape if we pull really hard? It won't hurt to try. It's pointless. We're completely wrapped in this damn tape. We're cocoons. Stuck in a web. Waiting to be eaten. But where's the spider? He's going to play with us first, isn't he? Pull yourself together and stop talking shit. I can't think properly. Did he hurt you? That bastard packs a hell of a punch. I've got a bit of a headache, but I think I'm all right. What about you, Mrs. A? Me? Fresh as a daisy but I'll feel better after we've dealt with this unpleasant guest of ours. Do you think he's going to... rape us? No, he is not. Don't worry, I'll figure something out. Let's just wait for him to come back. Sooner or later they always make a mistake. Miss A, I'm sorry I had upset you. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. And I'm sorry about the mug, too. It's all right. Water under the bridge. So, any ideas? Not that many, really. None at all, actually. I'm sorry. And you? What do you think we should do? We should kill the fucker. With what? We're tied up. Are you going to headbutt him to death? I will, if there's no other way. Come on, there's got to be something more sensible we can do. I'm not gonna die here. Not like this. Maybe together we can pull this pipe off the wall? How is that exactly going to help us? Stop asking stupid questions and pull with me. Great, that's just what we needed. A cold shower. I used to like flowers, you know. Like everyone else. Or even more. There was this guy. I should have told him from the start I wasn't interested. But I didn't. Maybe I was interested. In a way, probably. Flattered would be a better word. It was ten years ago. I can hardly even remember him now. He did that thing every week. Because he knew Eric was at work, and I was in the flat 
alone. So every Friday night, I'd get flowers delivered by a courier. Who's Eric? Your partner? My husband. He was a taxi driver, worked every weekend, and I was still on maternity leave. Zoe, our little daughter, was only six months old at the time. Well, five months and twenty-eight days exactly. She would be eleven now. Anyway, that one Friday evening's courier had delivered a big bouquet of the most beautiful lilies. Usually, I would have thrown them away, but I really liked them, somehow. They were extraordinary, absolutely stunning, and looked very expensive. I stood there looking at them, mesmerized. I didn't even hear the phone ring at first, but then I heard it loud and clear as if I'd woken up from a strange dream, and I knew it was him calling. Do you like the flowers? I asked you not to send me anything. I... I couldn't resist. You're all I can think of lately. It kills me that I can't see you. I would give anything. I'd better stop here. You know very well how I feel about you. I have a family now. I'm sorry, but I can't see you again. We've managed to patch things up with Eric. And there's Zoe. We have to try and make it work. Our daughter needs both her parents. So, yeah. I can't just run away with you. Life's not a film with Julia Roberts, you know? But sometimes doing crazy things can change your life for better. Do you really want to be that woman who in ten years' time realizes that she's wasted the best time of her life living with a man that she never loved? I... Look. I love my husband. I can take care of Zoe. I told you before. I'll be a good father to her, if you want. It doesn't work like that. You don't know anything about children. I'll learn. Give up? Honestly. I could never give up on you, Susan. Come on. Don't be like that. You're breaking my heart. It's too complicated. I don't even know you that well. Look, I'm an honest man. What you see is what you get. We might not know each other that well, but you can't deny that there's this great chemistry between us. It's as if we were meant to be together. Listen, I have to go. It's getting late. Wait. Yeah? When I call you again next Friday, you will answer the phone. Maybe, but you'll probably find a better girl by then. But now I really have to go. Bye. I guess I should do something about these flowers. I'd really like to keep them, but I don't want Eric to know I have a secret admirer. Now I can tell Eric that Mandy had brought them for Zoe. It seems like a pretty innocent lie. I doubt he'll notice anyway. I hope you're dreaming about something nice, my little star.
Eric must have come home early. But why? You're back early. Is something wrong? Yeah. Well, let's think about it for a minute. Is something wrong? Yes, Susan, there is. Didn't you watch television? Listen to the radio? Didn't talk to anyone today? What? what happened? Eric, just tell me what's wrong, okay? It was those bloody terrorists again, here on our doorstep. Would you believe that? So, it was a bomb? Yes, in a restaurant. There's chaos spreading all through the city. Everyone's panicking. The police and army are everywhere. But you don't even care, do you, Susan? Jesus. Are you alright? I'm fine. Did you get hurt? No, not really. But the cab smashed quite badly. I was just there when it happened. There was smoke. Clouds of dust so thick you couldn't see a fucking thing. So I stop, and all of a sudden some van hits me from the back. I hear my passenger screaming and shouting, and there's blood on the rear window. And just then another car drives right into us, and we're all stuck in that mess. Nobody knows what's going on but imagining this might just be the end of the world. But no, it was some geezer with a bloody bomb. They closed all the main streets, in case there's more of them. What time was that? Around 7pm. I spent another two hours trying to get someone to tow the damn cab to the garage. Would you believe? Our insurance doesn't even cover this sort of thing. You should have called me. I did! Four times! You didn't answer. I must have been... Yeah, yeah. You were busy with the baby. Every time it's the same old story. We've still got that wine in the fridge, haven't we? Get some glasses, Susan. I need a drink. Alright. I'll get the glasses. You get the wine. But are you sure you don't want to take a shower first? No. I just need a drink. I can wash later. Shit. Are you gonna get that? If it's Jerry, tell him I'm not here. I don't want to talk to them tonight. Hello? It's me again. I'm sorry, but I had to hear your voice again. I love you, Susan. Susan? You still there? Please, say something. Anything. Thanks, but we're already insured with someone else. I... Excuse me? Susan, it's me. The only thing I'm trying to sell to you is my heart. We won't be needing pet insurance either. What are you talking about? Would you like my husband to talk to you? He's just come home from work. He usually deals with insurance companies. Will you just put the phone down? Once you start talking to them, these insurance bloodsuckers will never leave you alone. Susan, I'm so sorry. Should I hang up? Just hang up, Susan. All right. Take care, then. Then the arguing started. It slowly grew into something bigger, something horrible, 
Stupid remarks and old grudges mixed with alcohol turned into some sick exchange of pointless accusations. It wasn't the first time we argued, but it was the last. Just look at the state of this place. It's a mess. Listen, I know you're with Zoe all day, but it's not like she's still a little baby. She's six months already. You'll have to organize your day a bit better and get things done. If other women find time, why can't you? Eric, you're drunk. Get off my case, all right? Look, I understand you've had a very bad day, but it's not my fault that the bomb had gone off and your car was damaged. I'd really like you to calm down now. I'm sure we can sort everything out. We always do. Well, that's what you think. Yeah? And what do you think, Eric? What do I think? So it matters all of a sudden what I think. Well, I'll tell you. Sure. I think you're lazy, Susan. You do nothing all day, while I keep working my ass off to provide for this family. I think you're trying to shift the responsibility on me, like you always did. I think you use the baby as an excuse for everything. And I think you're an asshole. How dare you accuse me of such things? It only takes one look at the flat to see it's all true. Let me go. I have to check on Zoe. I left a window open in her room. She might be cold. That's right. Just walk away. That's all you do, Susan. You can never finish anything. If there's one thing I don't want to finish, it's this stupid conversation. Why not? Are you afraid that I actually might be right? Are you scared of facing the truth? I'm sure Zoe's fine. It's the hottest summer we've had in years. It'll be good for her to have some fresh air in there. Won't you agree? I... I guess. Fine. Never mind. I haven't done anything wrong! Of course not! Because you're fucking perfect, aren't you? That's not what I said. Well, if you're so perfect, yeah? Then why are we here now, fighting? This is all messed up. You're behaving like a five-year-old? What the hell is wrong with you? You, Susan! You always knew which strings to pull. To tip me over the fucking edge! Don't be nasty. I'm doing all I can. Are you really? Okay, doing all you can. You obviously care about your husband, coming home after a hard day's work. He's gonna be hungry. But wait, where's his dinner? Oh, uh, let me guess. You didn't make it because you were too busy changing nappies, and singing, and playing, and washing. Yeah, I think so. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If you'd spent more time with our daughter yourself, you'd know how important these things are. So pardon me, there's no dinner for a hard-working husband. From now on, he's gonna have to cook for himself. Because, you know what? The wife is working just as hard, and she's really tired of being treated this way. She better get used to it, because this is just the start. There's gonna be some changes around here. I'm fed up of being pushed around by you. I put the bread on our table, don't I? I'm the man in this family! I will make the rules, and I'll get the respect I deserve. How can you talk to me like this? You're treating me like dirt. Didn't you forget something? I'm your wife. I'm the mother of your child. Doesn't that mean anything to you at all? A wife and a mother? Why don't you start acting like one? When was the last time you showed me that you care about me? All you ever talk about is the baby. I love her to bits, I swear I do. But I want to have a wife too. When was the last time you even kissed me? I'm not even talking about sex. Ugh, I knew it. Is that what bothers you so much? Is it? 
Of course it fucking bothers me. Does it not bother you that we never have time for each other? Look, we are new parents. It's always hard. All couples go through it, I heard. Well, fuck this. I heard different. I'm done talking to you. Of course you are. That's what you always do, isn't it? You run out of arguments, you stop talking to me, then you lock yourself in the bathroom and fucking cry. I'm sick of repeating the same old thing over and over again. Then why won't you give me a break, for God's sake? You're acting like I've done something terrible. I don't even know what your problem is. Is there something you're not telling me, Eric? You'd know if you listened to me. But you never listen to me, do you? Not to a single word I've ever said! Right. Here we go. It's not you. It's the alcohol speaking. I shouldn't be taking any of this seriously. I know that tomorrow you'll be apologizing to me for it. It was just a couple of glasses and you had some too! I'm not drunk! I wish I was. Maybe then I could laugh at this shitty life and not care so much. That's a good one. You really care so much, Eric. You should get a medal or something. I thought you said you weren't gonna talk to me no more. You are full of shit, Susan! Full of shit! Why don't you look at yourself, you idiot? So I'm an idiot now, am I? You're... You keep picking on me for nothing. No, this was coming, and you know it, Susan. If you're so unhappy with me, then what the fuck are you still doing here? Pack your bags and leave me alone. You're throwing me out. This is my fucking flat! I worked my fucking ass off for seven years to buy it! I'm not going anywhere! Stop it! Stop it, Susan. I've only just started. We should finally say to each other what we really think, right? We didn't even notice that outside the storm had started. I was so absorbed in that stupid fight that I forgot all about the open window. Anyway, and the flowers. Those fucking flowers. Right there, by her bed. She had some rare allergy to pollen. But we couldn't have known that. How were we supposed to know? It's rare. She started coughing and choking. The next time we saw her, when we found her, she, she was. After two days of what seemed like a narcotic dream, Eric had gone out and never came back again. They found him nearly a week later. He drank himself dead in the woods. I nearly didn't recognize him when I saw him in the morgue. It really was a hot summer. He looked... bad. Miss Ashworth, I... Thank you for telling me that. Now I understand. I understand why you're so sad all the time. <laughs> What do you want from us? Are you deaf? Mitzi, let me handle this. Let us go right now, you moron. Mitzi. Leave her alone. Don't you dare. No! Take me, instead. Take me.
If you hurt my friend, I... I will... What? What's going on? You're letting me go? Just like that? Where's my friend? What have you done to her? You sick son of a bitch. What do you want me to do? I don't understand! Still, Mixie. I'm gonna be right back with a knife, and I'll cut you down, all right?
really going to do it, aren't we? Yes, Mitzi. You will finally get your closure. Maybe I will get mine too. Did you take that map with you? Yes. We can always refer to it if we get lost. I've lived in this building for many years. I won't get lost, Mitzi. But it'd be a good idea to cross people off. Once we're sure it's not them, it might give us a clearer picture of how far we've got. Right. Okay. Good luck, Mrs. A. Mitzi. Are you sure you're feeling up to it? This recent incident, it must have been pretty tough for you. No, I'm good. Never felt better, Mrs. A. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to push it. Don't worry, Mrs. A. Could have happened to anyone. I'll clean it in a minute. But please, be more careful in the future, yes? You be more careful, nosy old boy. Hey, look at this. Valerian root extract. Cats love it. It has the same effect on them as catnip. They go absolutely crazy for it. You found it inside that sofa? Yes. I wonder how it got there. Maybe the Morrisons wanted to leave a goodbye gift for that woman and her dog? Yes. Well, they would. I always thought they were reasonable people. Oh, what a shame they moved out. Okay, I think we're getting closer.
Would you like to try your famous lock-picking skills on this lock here? Let's see... A young child could open this lock with a piece of wire. That's fantastic. Have you done it yet? No. I can't work when you're looking over my shoulder. Do you mind? No, sure. I'll just walk away for a minute and stare at the wall if that's what it takes to get this done. Thanks. Come on, guys. The party moved over here. Where are they? Mrs. A! Well, aren't they quick? This dog is making quite a racket. Someone should complain to the owner, don't you think? Definitely. She should put that broom down for a minute and sort a dog out. That'll teach you not to mess with the cat lady. Hello. You live on the first floor, am I right? Yes, that's correct. Flat two. And you're Susan Ashworth, I presume. I've been meaning to talk to you, actually. Really? Is something wrong? Well, it's those cats. I understand you're trying to do a good thing, but it's become unbearable lately. This can't be sanitary for people living here. And I'm sure it's not allowed by the council either. Are the cats bothering you? Yes, they are, actually. They usually stay outside anyway. I bet you hardly ever see them. I see them all the time, actually. Ever since the Morrisons from Flat One moved out last month, your cats seem to reside permanently on my floor. And that sofa, my god. They're always gathered round it like it's their shrine. It, it was Morrison's responsibility to dispose of it, but they just left it there. And a whole load of other rubbish, too. Okay, that's not my fault, really, is it? But you encourage cats to come here. You feed them. Everyone knows that. Every time I take William for a walk, he gets upset and tries to chase them away. Your dog is making horrible noise. Can't you do something? It's probably because your wretched cat's upset him again. Poor William. I'd better check on him. Are you sure the cat will be alright? Please, 
These cats can easily outrun some old mutt. I'm going to push this cabinet out of the way. I remember there was a door behind it. It's too heavy. I don't think that's gonna work. Are you kidding me? I'll show you how it's done. Stand back. There. The door everyone's forgotten about. Wow. You're stronger than you look, Mrs. A. Yeah, perhaps I am. Do you think you can unlock this mailbox? I think I can most certainly unlock this mailbox. Then do it quickly. Someone can come in any minute. A little room for the master locksmith. Really? Could you step away towards the stairs and turn around? Please? Master criminal, if anything. Done. Here's all the mail. Hide it in your pockets and let's get out of here. It was mostly junk mail and leaflets. I threw those away. Well, well. Looks like Pauline is looking for a babysitter. This letter says she's supposed to interview an agency nanny later today. Great. I could be a nanny. It's certainly worth a try. But I should warn you, I don't want to have anything to do with that baby. You're gonna have to handle this on your own. Sure, I understand. Leave it to me, Mrs. A. I think I've got an idea. I know how I could pay Brian back for all that he's done to me and the cats. Brian. The guy from Flat 6, right? Yes. Brian. That nasty piece of shit. He deserves to be punished, you know. And this wedding dress will be perfect for this. You ever heard the legend of the Cat Widow? The Cat Widow? No. Can't say I have. Well, you're not from around here. But I'm sure Brian knows it. He grew up in this city, just like me. So, what's it about? It's an old story about a ghost cat who takes a human form to haunt her killer. Wow, that's... pretty crazy, Mrs. A. Do you really think we can pull it off? Yes. Yes, of course. We just need to prepare. A good costume will do the job. This dress, we can alter it. We'll need some red paint, too. Are you sure about that? 
I promise this will work. And it will give us a chance to check his computer. If he's got one. Okay. So what do we need? Well, basically, we need three things. Red paint. There's a tin here. We could use that. The dress will make a great costume. We just need it in black. Also, it should look damaged. That's important. Cat Widow is a ghost after all. I'll need some scissors for that. We need some kind of mask. I don't want him to recognize me, obviously. Right, step back. I'll handle this. Oh, hello? Hi. I've heard you're looking for a babysitter. Is that correct? Well, yes, that's correct. Look no further. My name is Mitzi Hunt. I'm currently a student, but I'm great with children. And I could really use a job. These school tuitions get pretty expensive these days. I... okay, maybe. But why is Mrs. Ashworth here? Hello, Mrs. Ashworth! Uh, hi, Pauline. Um... How are you? I'm great, thanks. I haven't seen you for ages. Are you here to apply for a job as well? <laughs> no, of course not. I... Oh, I'm Mrs. Ashworth's lodger. She kindly offered me a room and we've been living together for the last couple of weeks. I mentioned to her I was looking for a job. My parents pay for the room and school fees, but I could do with some extra spending money. So, anyway, I'm starting this course on child psychology next semester, and I thought it would be useful to get some hands-on experience with little children. My mother always says you have to get your hands dirty to learn something properly. Not that you get dirty hands looking after babies. Just... M metaphorically speaking. Well, it can get dirty. I hope you understand the job would involve changing that piece too. Yes, of course. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, well, you sure sound enthusiastic. Would you like to come in? Both of you? It's okay. I'll wait. I could really do with your support. You know how shy I get sometimes. Yes. Well, you'll... Okay. You owe me. We need to work together on this. I'll do the talking, I promise. Fine. Just don't overdo it. It's too late for that, Mrs. A. What a nice flat! I love the wallpaper. Very retro. Um, thanks. I decorated myself just before Alyssa was born. Please follow me. We can talk in the living room. I'll need you to drag her away. How the hell am I supposed to do that? I don't know. I'm sure you can think of something. Why don't you think of something? I told you I don't do babies. 
I feel so uncomfortable here. I gladly blend with this cheesy wallpaper that you like so much and disappear. I know. So do I. Do you think I know anything about babies? No. But I'm trying to fake it and so far she's buying it. Look, I need you to stay cool and come up with something that'll make her leave the room. Got it? But that's where the problem is. I can't think of anything. Just play it by ear, yeah? I should let you know from the start that looking after a toddler is not an easy task. They're just beginning to crawl, they're very curious, and sometimes they can cry for no apparent reason. And my Alyssa, well, she is a very noisy child. Did you have any previous experience with children? Yes, I used to babysit my neighbor's kids. Excellent. I know we all have to start somewhere, but it helps if you at least know the basics. I'd like to get back to work soon, you see. Just part-time for now. That's why I need someone to stay with her. I'm not going to find it easy to be apart from Melissa, but my career has always been important to me as well. They won't wait for me forever. If I don't do this now, they'll just replace me. Where do you work? I'm a hotel manager. It's a very competitive industry, but I've always loved it. I miss it a lot. There just isn't enough support for working parents. Tell me about it. If I don't get back to work in two weeks' time, they will cut my maternity pay in half. So I haven't really got a choice. It's either this or Alyssa and me will face the life in poverty. I have a great connection with kids. I'm sure I can manage with Alyssa. Okay, I don't doubt that. How about, would you like to hold Alyssa for a minute? We should probably see if she likes you first. I, yes, definitely. I ought to wash my hands first. Your hands? My hands. I must have touched a million things on my way here. As much as I want to hold her, I just don't think it's safe, you know? Really? What have you been touching? Oh, you know, just ordinary things, this and that. You look pretty clean. I'm sure it'll be okay. Well, if you must know, I... I volunteered at the hospital earlier today. Oh, I'm impressed. You don't see many young people doing that these days. But you're right. As nice as that is of you, there's all sorts of bugs you can pick up in a hospital. It won't hurt to be extra careful. I'll show you to the bathroom. Would you mind answering the door for me? Sure. No problem. It's probably just my friend Kate. Just let her in, please. Is that okay? The bathroom's this way. Follow me. Your turn, Mrs. A. Seriously? Do something. Anything. Fine. Make sure you scrub those dirty hands really well. I need a bit of time. Hello? Hello? Are you Kate? I've been sent by the agency. My name is Rita Tickle. May I come in, please? Agency? What agency? The Happy Nanny Babysitter's Agency, of course. We bring fun and professionalism into childminding at a discount price. May I come in, please? Wait, just hang on a second. I believe we have an appointment. It was confirmed by post. Didn't you get a letter? Hang on, I said. I'm sorry. The position has already been taken. Oh, great. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thanks for your time. See ya. Wait, wait, wait. There must have been some kind of mix-up. No, there wasn't a mix-up. You're just too late. Bye. I'd better call the office and find out what happened.
So was it my friend at the door? No, just some door-to-door -door salesman. Well, I hope you told him to go to hell. I honestly don't know what these people are thinking. Yeah, me neither. I'm sure it's Kate this time. I'll let her in if you'll excuse me for a minute. Wait! I'm feeling really sick all of a sudden. Oh. Do you think you're actually going to throw up? Yes, definitely. Oh, yes. Quickly go back to the bathroom. I don't mean to be rude, but this is a very expensive carpet. Will you come with me? Please, what if I faint? I, I'm scared. Everything's just spinning around. Can Mrs. Ashworth go with you for a change? It's okay. I'll answer the door and let your friend in, yeah? Well... Fine. I'll put Alyssa in her bed for a minute and I'll come with you. You must have got some bag in the hospital after all. It's you. Again. Hello. Is this flight number eight? My name is Rita Tickle from the Happy Nanny Agency. May I come in, please? Look, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I can't help you. You are looking for a nanny, yeah? No, not anymore. I have 10 years experience and training in child discipline techniques and behavioural psychology. Also, I am known for good personal hygiene, strong work ethics, and I only take one break every five hours. Just to use the restroom. Wow, that sounds really great, but I don't need your services. You don't need a nanny. No. I've decided to give my baby up for adoption. You're an evil person. You'll go to hell for doing that to your baby. Yeah, I'm evil. But you're thick. These scissors seem sharp enough. Let's create some diversion. I hope this is what Mitzi had in mind. Oh, not that again. What happened to the lights? I'm... I'm terrified of the dark. I, I, I can't move. Oh God, I can't breathe. Calm down, it's all right. Probably just that stupid meter. It must have run out of money again. It's not even that dark. Please, you've got to do something about it. I, th I think I'm going to faint. Fine, just stay in my bedroom. There'll still be plenty of sunlight there at this time of the day. I'll go outside and put some money on the meter. It'll only take a minute. Right. Let's do it. Was that you, Mrs. Ashworth? What happened? Um, no idea. Maybe it's a blackout. Like in the old days. It's probably just the meter. Let me see. So it's not her either. It's time to leave. This interview is over. I don't get it. The cable's been cut. But why would anyone do that? I think we're going to go now. This whole power cut gave me a terrible headache. Is that you, Mitzi? 
But we haven't finished yet. Have you changed your mind about the job? No, of course not. I'm just scared of darkness. And I still feel sick, you know. Perhaps we can continue some other time. I've had it. I'm getting a new fuse box. Was that you, Jesse? Yeah. How are you doing, Pauline? Well, I we need the power back. Can you do something? Yeah, I can easily fix that. There's an electrical store that's open till late. I'll get some stuff and I'll be back before you know it. Bear in mind it's not just the fuse box, it's the cable this time. I'll get a new cable too, don't worry. But in the meantime, go home, find some candles and chill, yeah? Thanks, Jesse. That's awfully nice of you. Well, it was great seeing you, but we're going to leave now. Hello. Who's that? My name is Rita Tickle. Rita who? What the hell is going on here? Do you know this woman, Mrs. Ashworth? I've never seen her before in all my life. Now she'll think we are absolutely crazy. I wouldn't worry too much. You're not exactly the most popular neighbour in the house anyway. Thanks. What? You don't actually care what those idiots think, do you? No. Of course not. It's just that Pauline seems all right. I'm not too proud of causing her all this trouble. It'll get fixed soon. Look, Jesse's gone out. We can now get inside flat seven and see what he's been up to. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. We can also cross Pauline off the list. I've searched through her internet history, and needless to say, there's nothing exciting there. Now that he's gone, we can get inside? Yes, let's do that. I'll close my eyes and you pick that lock, Mitzi. Okay, but no peeking. I'd never. You've really hurt my feelings now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now close them. There, job done. Jesus, are these... Relax, Mrs. A. They're just Halloween masks. Oh, good. That's good. Because I swear, if I see another bloody head... So, who's got windows over this side of the building? Well, Joe Davis lives right below. I guess we could also check one flat below Joe's. I just hope the cable's long enough. Let's find out, shall we? Look, she left the door open. Do you want to check her flat? I'll stay here and keep watch. Good idea. I'll be as quick as I can. It's not her. I didn't find anything. No computers, no laptops, no telephone line. Okay, I'm not really surprised, are you?
At least we can now cross her off the list. Let's go. I'll try to catch that thing for you, all right? It's a statue of a cat. How nice. So there's another wacko obsessed with cats in this house. Lovely. Clearly this place is empty. I reckon we can cross it off the list. What does depression feel like? Well, it feels like all I want is to die, but I have to live. That's funny. Most of the time I feel like I want to live, but I have to die. I see I caught this statue only so you could smash it to pieces. Thanks. I don't remember asking you to catch anything. Do you want to go in first? Come on in. The place seems empty. Watch out, Mrs. A. There's a massive hole in the floor. Just step around it. I'm not blind. Besides, I know it's there. We saw it from the floor below. Let's have a look around. There's got to be a computer here somewhere. I really don't like this place. Yeah. It's rather creepy. Bingo! We found what we were looking for. This laptop could be it, you know. Maybe Joe is our guy after all. No, no, no. It's a disaster. The power lead is missing. It won't switch on. Right. What a shame. Can we go now, please? I think I've seen enough. I don't need any more trouble. No, it's okay. I've got an idea. It seems it's a similar model to mine. I'll just go back to the flat and bring my power lead. I don't know. You sure this is gonna work? I think so. At least we'll give it a shot. Just stay here and I'll be back in a second. What? You want me to stay here alone? Did you, by any chance, miss the door over there with three sixes written all over it in blood? Well, no, I saw it. It's not blood, it's just paint. Did you forget the hole in the middle of the room? The rotten food on the table? You said you haven't seen this guy for ages. He probably doesn't even live here anymore. Relax. Nothing's gonna happen. I'll be back before you know it. I'm an idiot. But fine, I'll wait here. While I'm gone... Think of a vegetable. 
What? Why? To keep yourself busy. I bet I can guess which vegetable you were thinking of when I come back. So you're a mind reader now? No. This is just a little experiment of mine. Okay, whatever. Now go. We haven't got all day. Why do I always end up in places like this? Just one big step. Damn, the door handle just came off in my hand. How am I going to get out of here now? Mitzi? Mitzi, are you there? Shit. That damn hole. Nearly forgot about it this time. What the? I've got to get out of here. What? Jesus. No. You were not supposed to be here! to ruin everything. What have you done, you stupid, evil bitch? Who are you? I'm sorry, the door was open? I thought you moved out. You took her away, didn't you? What has she ever done to you? What? Look, sir, you are wrong. I just came here to find my cat. It's gone missing. Yeah, I see. That stupid cat. I've been looking for it too. The little bastard took off with my key. I'm gonna rip him to pieces. I don't want any trouble. Just let me go. And I've got a gun. I can shoot you right there in your heart. It's not worth it, Joe. I've done you no harm. Of course you haven't got a heart. Isn't that right? I... I have no idea what you're talking about. Listen, I've got to go now, all right? I'll slowly walk out of here, and you'll never see me again. Calm down. I'll go now, and we'll forget all about this. There's nowhere to go. It's all wrong. No matter what I do. 
Damn it! Get back here right now and give me that blasted key! Please, don't get angry. I don't have any keys. Just sit down and take a deep breath while I make my way out, all right? Come in, come in. There's no need to be afraid. I, I don't buy it. Come in already. I might need your help with something. This is all just a dream, right? It's funny that you would say that. I've already heard that somewhere today. But if this is a dream, I've been asleep for a very long time. Where are we? I really can't remember the name of this town, but I'm pretty sure the hotel is called Quiet Haven. This is a hotel? I know, it's a joke. They shouldn't charge half the price for this dump if you ask me. You need my help. I thought you wanted to kill me. Why would I want to kill you? You must be mistaken. Who do you think I am? A man who paints on walls with blood? Blood? It was just red paint. What made you think it was blood? That's crazy! I... Oh, forget it. I'm sorry. I just want to leave. Yes, I understand. I wouldn't stay here myself if it was my decision to make. I'm stuck here too. You see, my wife Ivy is in the room to the left. She's a little fragile at the moment. She said she was going to do her makeup, but it's been a week now. Maybe longer. Every time I try to talk to her, she just gets angry and she tells me she's not done yet i've cooked her a meal but she ignores me she never likes what i cook but what's that got to do with me if you talk to her i'll show you the way out i promise just go in there and tell her tell her she looks fine she's always so careful about looking perfect okay okay i'll see what i can do Bye, Joe. Hello? Misery? I is that what you said?
No. 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 No! This isn't Ivy! This isn't my wife! It's the monster. It followed me here. It always follows me. No matter what I do. Look, I'm... I'm sorry. You must kill it. What? Why me? You still got that power lead, haven't you? The one you stole from me? How do you even know about it? You must use it to kill her. To strangle her. You're out of your mind! Do it! Strangle the goddamn creature so it never follows me again, or I'll shoot you right here, right now! I... You leave me no choice. Go ahead. Wrap it round her neck and pull it tight. Yes. There's no other way. into you, Mrs. A. I... I don't know. Did you just try to strangle me? No. Oh, God, no. I would never do that, Mitzi. I guess I... I must have panicked. I thought you were someone else. Look, I was gone for less than one minute. Really? Somehow it felt longer than that. At least you found the laptop cable. That's good news because I don't think mine will be any good. Let's see what's on this hard drive, shall we? Well, that was a waste of time. Never mind. At least now we're sure it's not him. Let's just go. I don't want to spend another minute in this place. Hey, did you think of a vegetable? What? I'd asked you to think of a vegetable while I was gone. So, did you? I... yeah, sure. Great! Now don't tell me, was it... Carrot? Yes. A carrot? That's amazing. How did you know? That's the secret. I can't tell you that, Mrs. A, or else it wouldn't be a magic trick anymore. Yay, it works every time. Okay, okay, don't get too big-headed now. Sure, but... I am the greatest! <laughs> Look, I only said it was carrot to be nice. In fact, I thought about celery. I wasn't going to say, but you leave me no choice. Yeah, right. Yes. Now, let's go. Joe can come back any minute, and you don't want to meet him. He is not a nice guy. Right. I should be able to use that computer now. Could you give me five minutes, Mrs. A? Sure. Why not? I'll keep an eye on the door. It's not him either. Damn it!
We need to make some adjustments. Now this is a dress worthy of the Cat Widow. <laughs> Why don't you admit it was too small for you? Ha ha, bloody ha. Why don't you just shut up? Whoever wore this dress probably hadn't eaten in years. You'd struggle to get a skeleton into it. This is it. We've got all we need. Great! Are you going to tell me about the Cat Widow now? Yes. It's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But, trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck, clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day, her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp, dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then, eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger, rage even, her last craving, before she drowned, was for revenge, for blood. And so she returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat, and her face white, rotten, face of a corpse, those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers, but there was someone she had to see first, someone special, someone she really hated the most. As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. The 
there was nobody there. He almost felt disappointed. But before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. He noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was a cat's skull stuck on the seat of his bike. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed. Remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong. And that something had entered his home now, too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. Cat Widow is here, was written all over the wall. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. There was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off, but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished. The part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor. Was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped like an animal. He had to get out of there. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set a screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper. More like a her. She was there, in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face. And yet, he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. She came closer, like a ghost and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. 
As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him. His knees go weak, his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. As much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then he fainted. <laughs> Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will, once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself. And I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam. Because it definitely isn't Brian. I've searched through his laptop and all I found was a load of porn. Let's cross him off the list. Would you like to talk to him? Sure. I'll pretend I'm doing one of those customer surveys. Old people usually have time to answer lots of stupid questions. They just want some attention, Mitzi. Hello there, sir. If you could spare us just a few minutes of your time, we'd like to ask some questions about your internet service provider. I'm not interested. I don't have any money. Go bother someone else. Oh. But we're not trying to sell anything. It's just a little survey. What? Wait a second. I, I can't hear what you're saying, sweetie. Let me get my hearing aid. Think he'll be back with a shotgun? Don't be silly. This isn't America. Uh, I thought I heard someone. What did you want? Do you live alone? When you're an old man like me, you end up watching all your friends and family die. I'll be 85 this year. But I can still cook my dinner, and I make my bed every morning, all by myself. So... you do live alone, then? Look, young lady, I don't need any help. I've told them already. I can manage just fine. I can still cook my dinner, and I make my bed every morning, all by myself. And not that it's any of your business, but when I die, I'll die in my own home, in my own bed. I'm honestly not trying to take that away from you. We're just here to ask about... I will not have anyone washing me, or, or dressing me, or feeding me. I can manage. I've done it all my life, and it'll stay this way. I can still cook my bed, and, and I make my dinner every morning, all by myself. Do you own computer connected to the internet? Say again? Right. Okay. Do you... I can't hear you very well, dear. You'll have to speak up. I'm an old man, you know. I'll be 85 this year. Do you have a computer? There's no need to shout. I've got my hearing aids. I can hear what you're saying. Sorry. A young, pretty lady like yourself wouldn't understand about old age. 
We live in two different worlds, dear. And if you're here to make fun of me, why won't you just go ahead and be done with it? No, no, with all respect, I... I just wanted to ask if you by any chance own a computer. Pardon? A computer! Wait a second, dear. I think I need to change the batteries in my hearing aid. I must have forgotten to switch them off last night. I'll be right back. No, wait! Jesus. I don't think I've got enough patience for this, Mrs. A. To be honest, the chances that he's our guy are pretty slim. I think we should go. Yeah, this is pointless. Even if he did have a computer, he probably wouldn't even remember how to switch it on. Let's say goodbye quickly and try to look elsewhere. Can I help you? Not really. We were just going. What? I don't want to buy anything. I told you before, I'm not interested. I don't have any money. Go bother someone else. Sorry to have bothered you, sir. We'll go now. I'll see you later, ladies. Next time I'll do the talking, yeah? He's tough. Wouldn't answer a single question. But he can't possibly be an internet whiz. Yep, he's just a lonely old man. Let's cross him off the list. Well, that means we've checked everyone. We've hit a brick wall. Perhaps I was wrong. Maybe he doesn't live here at all. I think we need to sleep on it, and we might get some more ideas in the morning. Shall we head back home? Yeah, I do feel tired. You're right. We need some sleep. Thanks, Susan. It meant a lot that you came with me today. What's that? A note? What does it say, Mrs. A? You will not believe it. Meet me at midnight, both of you. I will wait. Flat five. Door will be open. Do not fear. Eye of Adam. Why? That's the old guy. It can't be. It can't be him. I guess we'll find out. At midnight. We've got a few hours until then. Let's get some coffee. It's just you and me, my love. No one will find us here. Stop worrying, Ivy. It will be alright. I will always love you. You know that. I'm gonna make you all better.
Look at this door. Crazy son of a bitch. That's not gonna stop us. I think there's someone in the kitchen. Are you... Are you Adam? Me? No, of course not. I don't have anything to do with all this foolishness. Never have. It's my son. I've told him time and time again, but he never listens. I've done my best to protect that boy, you know. I'm all he's got left in the world since his mama died, but it just wasn't enough. Where is he then? Where's I of Adam? He's in his room. Where else would he be? He's always in his room, staring at that screen for as long as he can. Look, I've made up my mind about this. I want to help you. This mess he's in, it's gone too far. I don't, I, I can't be part of this. What are you talking about? Oh, you don't understand. He's watching us. Right now, he can see us on his camera. He's very clever with this stuff. I never got my head around it. Just as much as I needed to, I guess. But not a lot. Give us the key to his room. I want to talk to him. Look, it's a trap. He knows why you're here, and he will kill you. Both of you. But he will not kill me. He won't dare. All these years. I've looked after him well. He owes me everything. It breaks my heart to do this now. What choice do I have? He left me this. I was supposed to keep it for myself. But I want you to take it. He won't dare to kill his own father. I won't let two innocent lives be lost because of him. What is it? Just take the damn thing. There's not much time. Didn't you hear me? He's watching. What is it, Mrs. A? It's a shoebox. Take it away. Get rid of it. He must see that I don't have it anymore. Shall we open it? Oh, God. Mitzi, we have to get out of here. Quickly. It's a gas mask. He's going to poison us. It's too late! Shit. Oh, shit. 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 No! Stop that, Adam! You're going to kill your father! We'll never make it to the door. That room is filling up with gas too quickly. Put the mask on, Mrs. A. What about you? No. No, I can't! You've got to. This is your only chance. I... No. I can't let you die. Not like this. It's my fault that you're here. I'm dying anyway. And you... You've got to live, Mrs. A. You'll live and you'll be happy again. You are... You've been a great friend, Mrs. A. No. You've got a date. And I'll make sure you turn up for it. I can't. There is no time to argue. I'll be fine. Now. Do it! Mitzi, think of a vegetable while I'm gone.
Welcome home, darling. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Say what you've got to say and let's finish this. I'm tired of you. Tired of all this madness. I just need to get back. Very well. I'm not planning to keep you long. Let's go inside. I have one last job for you. There are still two candles left, Susan. You know how this works. A soul for a soul. And that's it. I blow out the last candle, and I'll never have to see you again. Only if you blow out the right one, I'll never bother you again. Isn't that what you want? But if you choose wrong, it will be your life, extinguished forever. Just take a deep breath and do it. But how should I know which one's right? That's the thing, Susan. You can't know that. In life, you can't always know the consequences before you make a decision. Haven't you learned that yet? That's not fair. Nothing is fair. You opened your heart talking to that doctor, and he butchered you like an animal. Then, those disgusting cannibals, they'd chop you up and cook you for dinner if you'd let them. And what about the man with the flowers? All that he wanted was to hear you play before he split your skull open. The way your husband treated you. The way your neighbors laughed at you for years, just for being different. You did not deserve all that, and yet it happened. Am I forgetting something? Ah, oh, yes, of course. Most of all, was it fair that... Shut up! Just shut up, you ugly bitch! Now I know who you really are. All those feelings that I had in me for years. That bitter guilt and self-pity. That hatred for myself and everyone else. You are that miserable illness that's consumed my heart all these years. You, always there, always. Every day I looked at you in the mirror, like a dark cloud I couldn't see through. I let you take control of my life. I believed it was right to feel like this. But not any longer. This ends here. Then blow out the candle. No, I won't. I'm done playing your stupid little games. You won't tell me what to do anymore. I am stronger than you. I can close my eyes and you'll be gone. Blow out the candle! It's time to say goodbye, sister. I'm not gonna miss you. You will never leave this place without me. You need me. We are one. No. Tomato. You were thinking about a tomato, right? Tomato is a fruit, silly. Who cares? I like tomatoes. So do I. But, I hate to disappoint you, but I was really thinking of onions. Why onions? They're the saddest of the vegetables, of course. They make people cry. I... What happened, Mrs. A? I saw you die. And yet, you're here. Alive, like, if nothing's ever happened. Well, let's put it this way. Everyone knows cats have nine lives. So do cat ladies, apparently. But this time, 
I feel there won't be second chances. I'm down to one last life now. I can't afford to waste it. You are such a nutter, Mrs. A. You are absolutely fucking bonkers. But I'm so happy to see you. Never, ever do that to me again, all right? I can happily promise you that, Mitzi. This is it. His room is through that door. It's time to face the eye of Adam. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. You're... You're the eye of Adam? A pathetic, wheelchair-bound invalid? Is this a joke? Do you... Do you know who I am? Do you know what you've done to me? You fucking murderer! Tonight it's your turn to die. I'm gonna paint this room with your brains and I'm gonna watch and smile. I swear to God I'll do it. Well? Nothing to say? Nothing at all? Aren't you going to beg for your sad little life? Say something! Anything! Mitzi, where did you get that gun from? It doesn't matter. Please, Mrs. A. This is something I have to do. You are free to leave if you want. You don't have to be a part of it. Just try to understand. Beg for forgiveness, you scum. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't believe I'm gonna shoot you, do you? Oh, I've dreamt of this moment for so long. Look at this man, Mitzi. He hasn't twitched a muscle since we entered the room. I think he's paralyzed. That's... That's impossible! He's lying to us! He's faking it! Do something! Talk for God's sake! I need you to answer me! I need to know! He won't answer you. He can't talk. Then... How did he post all that stuff online? it I think I know how see that little device on his left eye I've heard about these it's a controller it seems the only part of his body he can move is his eyeball controller connected to the computer tracks its movement allowing him to what that's ridiculous how do you even know such things I'm a nurse? I've seen these before. Well, I've seen eye-controlled wheelchairs, but there's no reason why it wouldn't work with a computer. Jesus. That would explain the whole Eye of Adam thing. He really is just the eye. But, no, that doesn't change anything. He must die. He deserves nothing more. Shit! I will fucking do it! Just tell me one thing. One thing! Why? Why did you make Jack kill himself? Fine. 
It'll be a pleasure. Ready to die, scumbag? Look at these oxygen tanks. I don't think it's a good idea. What? Why not? I'm the one holding a gun here. And I will blow this bastard's brain out as soon as he looks at me. You hear me? Look at me. I want you to see what you've done. The pain you've caused me. Mitzi, that's not what I meant. Just put the gun down for a second. No! No. I can't do that, Mrs. A. I'm sorry. This is something I have to do. I have to. Can't you hear that hissing sound? These cylinders are clearly leaking gas. Please stay out of it. You'll make a whole room blow up. I don't care. Just leave me alone. You lied to me. You never said you wanted to kill him. Now, wasn't that quite obvious? What did you think I wanted to do? Have a coffee with him? Chat about the weather or, or politics? For God's sake, I'm here because this son of a bitch needs to die. If I don't kill him now, he'll just carry on and more innocent people will lose their lives. Do you really want that? Because I don't. This isn't the way to do it. Just turn these computers off instead. No! He doesn't deserve to live after what he's done. And who are you to serve justice like this? Do you really want to kill an unarmed, paralyzed man? Why are you doing this, Mrs. A? I thought you were my friend. That's exactly why I'm doing this? Even if we survive the explosion, how will you be able to live with yourself? won't have very long to live with it. I'll manage just fine. Think about it for a second. Would Jack really want this? He... This bastard messed with Jack's head. He tricked him. That's what he does. He fucking tricked him. But would Jack really want you to become a murderer? He wasn't violent at all. He was the kindest, sweetest guy I ever knew. Exactly. Now, put that gun down already. But what about me? No, I'll do it. I know Jack will forgive me. Without his father, he's harmless. He was the one who supplied him with all this technology. He fulfilled his every single wish. I know this guy's rotten bad. There's no excuse for what he did. But he will be punished for it. Trust me. They'll put him in some stinking nursing home. He'll live his life like a vegetable. Stuck to bed. He'll have time to think about what he's done. And he'll never see a computer screen again. Isn't that enough? He said, do it. He wants to die, and I want to kill him. He wants us all to die. Can't you see that? Isn't that what he's been preaching? A joint suicide. That's why he wants you to shoot him. So we can all get blown to pieces. His final act. The work of his life. Are you really going to give him that satisfaction? Remember what you said about feeding the troll? That's exactly what you're going to do if you kill him now. No. Maybe you're right. You should leave, Mrs. A. I'd never want you to get hurt. But I'm not going away without this fucker dead. Even if that means I die too. Mitzi, have you lost your mind? You're going to sacrifice your life for this scum? He's... A parasite! A worthless, evil piece of shit! It's not like I've got anyone to live for, is it? What? What about your mother? Your family? She's dead! Yeah, 
I lied. I always lie. I grew up in an orphanage. My family never wanted to know me. The only person that cared about me was Jack. And he's dead! Yeah. Happy now? So get the fuck out of here and let me do what I got to do. I care about you. Do it for me. Come on, mate. It's been a long day. Let's go home. We've won. Have we really? Trust me. I know we have. How? I'm the cat lady. From now on, I win every single day. It's me, again, talking about my ordinary little life, as usual. I'm still surprised anyone would want to read this at all. The ramblings of a cat lady. I met some people. We go out sometimes, and I'm not alone anymore. It turned out there were others who felt like I did. I talked to them, tried to help. And now, I'm writing this blog. I must confess, yesterday was bad. It was one of those days when you feel like you're back in the past, and all the good stuff that happened was just a dream. But I woke up today, feeling better. Maybe I can never get rid of it. This invisible illness. Maybe it will always be living somewhere deep inside me. Asleep. Waiting. And when it'll hit me, it'll hit me hard. But if there's one thing Mitzi taught me, it's that you have to pick yourself up and carry on. It doesn't matter that life isn't fair. It doesn't matter that you make mistakes. You fall and rise again. And speaking of Mitzi, well, I don't know what happened. I guess I never will. But against all odds, she just got better. Maybe it's because of that last candle. Or some other things I did that year. I don't really care. She's still here. That's all that matters to me. Every time I visit my daughter's grave, she comes too. We don't have to talk. It's just nice to have somebody there with me. Worlds full of liars, traitors, cowards. But every now and then, you meet someone like Mitzi, who will just smile at it all. Now, I've forgiven the world and myself too. I teach myself to smile again. One day I'll get there. I know I will. Even if it takes me not nine.